It has been said many different times over the past few months that what we have experienced and are still experiencing is quite unprecedented. No one could have predicted, even in February, what lay ahead for us. Everyone has been affected. No individual and no family has been left untouched by the negative effects of this pandemic. The church, which is of course a family, in many ways an extension of our own family, has been greatly affected as well. Community is at the heart of everything that we do as church. The gathering for Mass and the sacraments, and the coming together for social and charity events, that's so essential to the nourishment of our faith. The pandemic has robbed us of many opportunities to gather together and left many faith communities with the problem of how to adapt in the face of very difficult and dangerous dilemmas. Thankfully, many of our parishes, our priests and pastoral councils and faith groups have adapted to this new situation very quickly and very well over the past few months. So many places have increased their online presence to a remarkable degree. There was a recent study carried out by Queen's University in Belfast and they showed that before the pandemic, 45% of faith communities had no online presence whatsoever. But by the end of May, that figure was down to 13%. Now that's a remarkable change. And something that priests and pastoral councils and finance committees across the archdiocese and across the country have to be commended for. The web outreach of the Archdiocese of Armagh has been particularly strong. 143,000 people have viewed our internet uh, pages, our websites, Facebook pages and YouTube channels since the pandemic began. And that's not even taken into account all the people who watch various different services on webcams. We know, however, that one event on webcam called Hope and Gratitude, a prayer service from the Cathedral in Armagh, attracted 66,000 individual viewers. So it'll be very important to keep that online presence strong even after this pandemic has eased. One of the more useful outcomes of the past few months has been the ability that that time has given all of us to reflect on what the future of our church might be like. That, of course, was the purpose of the year of reflection and prayer in the first place. We have received, over the past few months, some insight into how the future might look in a situation where we have far less priests than we have now. Such a future, unfortunately, is not too far away, perhaps 10 or 20 years. And it has brought home to us, I think, very forcefully the need to prepare, to refocus on the importance of pastoral councils and pastoral areas as useful structures for keeping church life dynamic and fruitful, even when they may not have a full-time resident priest. It will be so important keep communities alive because as we know community is the seedbed of faith the seedbed of vocation back in january when we launched the year of reflection and prayer we asked for prayer ambassadors to be appointed to each parish sharon dunn one of the pastoral workers in the archdiocese will now explain the role of the prayer ambassador as Bishop Michael just outlined, the church, like any other family or organisation, has been badly affected by the coronavirus pandemic worldwide. The closure of our churches have taught us how we can be church and adapt in a new way. The role of the prayer ambassador was created to increase awareness of this year's reflection and prayer in the parishes and their role is now more important than ever in assisting in the new reality we find ourselves in. In particular the prayer ambassadors are asked to promote the resources that are provided on www.armapraise.com website. 
These resources include weekly reflections, children's resources, novenas and sacramental preparation to name but a few. The prayer ambassadors are asked to creatively share these resources and to assist the clergy and parish pastoral councils to encourage parishioners to pray for the archdiocese and for each other. It will also be necessary to reflect on the past few months of pain and change and to discern as individuals and as a community the future of our local church. We hope that, with the Prayer Ambassador's assistance, we can begin a process of listening to the views, experiences and hopes of the people in each parish and to collect and collate the information so it can be used in a wider conversation about what the future holds and how we can be prepared for it. It is hoped that next year, when please God the present restrictions are lifted, we will begin a process of listening around the diocese that will go deeper into our reflection on church life and on the future. In the meantime, however, there are three questions that I would like you to ask yourself and maybe to discuss with others as well. These are the three questions and they will appear on the screen as well as I talk about them. The first question is, what has this period of separation and isolation changed for you in relation to church and faith? We've seen that it has been a very difficult time uh, for people and a difficult time for church. So just reflect on what that period of separation and isolation has changed for you, particularly in relation to church and faith. The second question takes a quote from uh, Father Eugene Duffy in a recent article that he wrote in the Irish Times and he stated we are in any case facing a situation where in a decade or so Sunday Mass will not be celebrated in every parish and we will have to start thinking at last about how the life of faith is sustained in such situations. So taking that quote uh, to heart and, and reflecting on it, identify one thing that we could do as a diocese to begin to sustain faith, both personally and collectively, as we emerge from this current lockdown situation. And the third question is a simple question, it's one directed at you. How can you and those close to you contribute to the mission of the church in your parish or pastoral area? So it's getting you to reflect on how you can contribute to the continued mission of the parish in your area. So these three questions will be important uh, to begin the process of reflection and to begin to understand what this pandemic and the resultant lockdown have taught us and how we need to approach the future together as a church. Now you can provide your own feedback uh, to your parish prayer ambassador or to your local priest, or you can do so perhaps directly to yprma at gmail.com and you'll see that address on your screen. That's yprma at gmail.com. So thank you to all of you for your support for all priests and religious during these challenging times. Keep safe, keep well, and may God bless you.